नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ व्यू पॉइंट आई एम आनंद नरसिम्हन ब्रेक ऑफ डॉन दिस थर्सडे सो साइमल्टेनियस रेड्स एट फिफ्टी सिक्स लोकेशन अक्रॉस केरला बाय द एन आई ए द रेड्स वर एम द टू और द सेकेंड रंग लीडरशिप ऑफ द पी एफ आई और द पॉपुलर फ्रंट ऑफ इंडिया द पी एफ आई हैज बीन बैंड फॉर फाइव ईयर्स फॉर अनलॉफुल एक्टिविटीज दीज रेड्स वर एम एट थॉटिंग एनी अटेम्प्ट बाय द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू रीग्रुप Now, before the ban on the 28th of September this year, nearly 200 PFI cadres were rounded up and arrested across 13 states in the country. Post the ban, also there were raids across more than 50 locations, largely in Kerala, in order to flush out key cadres who continue to remain in hiding, or and those who could continue the operations of this outfit despite the top-rung leadership being incarcerated. Now, the raids this Thursday. are the second time the NIA has moved in on multiple locations in Kerala is the organization that clearly finds its roots in the 1977 originated semi is it trying to regroup how deeply embedded are their cadre its association with global terrorist organizations and its cadre actively serving the cause of the ISIS in Syria are all under scanner is the ban on PFI enough have sufficient cadre been rounded up many questions remain or are the ogws or overground workers of the pfi still furthering the outfit's radical cause early morning raids across kerala by the national investigation agency aimed at striking at the foundation of the banned popular front of india over 50 locations were raided including the homes of second rung leaders of the organization We are at Thonekal in Tiruvananthapuram the residence of Nawaz the former sonal president of uh, PFI now the NIA teams had reached here at around 4 am until about uh, 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 9 9:30 they have conducted checks at this uh, house here two mobile phones belonging to him and his wife were seized uh, by them and uh, uh, no bank documents or such were seized Sources tell CNN News 18 that weapons and incriminating documents were found in the homes of some PFI members. These officials they have concluded the raid in Kannur here. The primary interest is whether these uh, these uh, activists they are having any sort of uh, connection uh, still with the with the other leaders of the band organization. What is the financial source? That is what is uh, really worrying the NIA. In September, multi-agency teams arrested several functionaries of BFI, including its top leadership, for allegedly supporting terror activities. Following this, the outfit was banned by the center for five years. The ban was followed by hartals by angry BFI members. There was widespread violence across Kerala, after which the High Court directed the state government to recover the damage to property from the office bearers and accused in the case. But with the latest round of raids, does it mean that the PFI is trying to revive its terror tentacles? Let's quickly get to uh, the locations where the raids have been uh, conducted. It all started in Patanam Titta, but in Ernakulam there are 13 places where the raids took place. Let's let's call that out uh, one by one. We'll show you. Uh, so th- in Kerala largely and if you were to see Ernakulam 13 locations Alappura 3 locations Kollam saw 3 locations and uh, then further on Patanam Titta there were 3 locations that were raided Mallappuram 7 locations raided Wayanad 6 locations raided and uh, Tiruvananthapuram 3 locations raided Kottayam 2 locations raided Thrissur 2 locations raided so it is the length and breadth of Kerala that you would see so there is Palakkad one location Kozhikode four locations and Kannur city nine locations raided so P- PFI largely started its operations on the north side of Kerala on the northern Kerala but they have now spread not just across all of Kerala ladies and gentlemen they are now present in more than 23 states and union territories in our country 13 states where largely rounding up happened before the ban came into place and their activities have been under the radar for a while now is this organization regrouping is it trying to perhaps once again spread its terror tentacles these are questions that remain let's go across to our guests this evening who are joining us nirmal kaur former ips officer with us mithun vijay kumar author and citizen activist with us savio rodriguez 
He is a founder and editor in chief of Goa Chronicles with us, and Neera Jatri, author, Brainwashed Republic, also with us. Namaste to everybody. Thank you very much. Nirmal Korji, let me ask you this. Is this ban enough? Have enough of their cadre been rounded? Or are you worried that there are too many who are embedded across the system? Yes, I, I think there are quite a few of them who have infiltrated the civic institutions mm. and this ban is not going to be enough, you know, unless one is eternally eternally vigilant and keeps, uh, you know, revisiting it and trying to find out what is happening and eternal vigilance is going to be really the price for this kind of to get rid of PFI or at least to limit them. Mm. Because if you see the the examples after which PFI is modeled itself like the Muslim Brotherhood, largely mm. present in Turkey and those areas, Arab world. Mm. The, how they, you know, they embedded the civic institutions. And these Nakshabandi people, uh, they started running a hospice. Despite mm. the best of their efforts, the government could not shut down the hospice. Because mm. it was a, it was a, you know, it was, it was a charitable thing and society would react. But the ideas that spread from the hospice, mm. within a generation, within 15-20 years, they changed the face of the entire uh, country. And there are so many of them now demanding, you know, the, the political Islam, you know, that mm. they should be part of the larger the Islamic agenda and, you mm. know, the, that kind of a thing. Mm. So I think now even in PFI, so many of them have, um, they have, you know, embedded themselves into the our civic institutions, mm. maybe the, uh, you know, the academics or the journalists or the, you mm. know, the executive or maybe even judiciary and other places. Mm. So it's not going to be that easy to... Um, you know, I think the eternal vigilance is required and cadres need to be, you know, it needs to be reviewed every few months, every maybe every 30 days or something and find out what is exactly happening on the ground and keep rounding up people and keep taking preventive action. Otherwise, this ban is not going to be of any help because they'll just masquerade at someone else. I mean, as a, yes. maybe under another umbrella or under another name. Now, here is, uh, here is what we are also getting, uh, Nirmalji, that uh, as three, three leaders of the banned Islamist organization, Popular Front of India, went missing from Patnam Titta, even before the NIA started the raids. Now, the leaders are suspected to have fled from their residence just hours or perhaps minutes ahead of the NIA team reaching there. And these are dawn raids which have happened. So the Matrubhumi is, is saying that there are three PFI leaders in the area who left before the NIA raids with one of them leaving just hours ahead of the NIA raid. This because they may the, have these, moles in the department. The, these raids were conducted by the NIA after intimating the local police. So the local police was informed that we will conduct these raids. Now this is again a cause for concern, Nirmalji. Yeah, I think they may have their moles there and they may have some surveillance system and moles there, which their informants there who give them a heads up every time any action is planned. So maybe that is, uh, I think I'm. it's most likely that that is the reason they fled because they knew of the raids coming up and they fled their homes quickly in the night. Hmm. Because uh, w what is the, the residences of some of their official cadre have also been raided. So there is one of their state secretary whose uh, residence has been raided and he was not found there. Uh, so he is for, he is being absconding. So they are getting a certain residence of Mohammad Rashid, PFI secretary being searched in Patanam Titta, residence of Nizar, a member of the state committee raided. And Appa, uh, so in multiple locations, PFI functionaries, they seem to have got their organization very uh, well knit. Uh, Mithun. They definitely got a heads up about yes. the raid coming up, hmm. about the upcoming raid. They got a heads up and then they fled. No, and not just that. They, Is it a question to me? Yeah, yes, Mithun Vijay Kumar. Okay, they okay. they so. seem to have perfected all that they got wrong when they were SIMI, when they were uh, organizations under other names. But between 2006 and 2022, the PFI seems to have perfected that even if its top rung is put away, how the second rung, third tier, fourth tier will continue the organization's work. Are you worried that they may have perfected this? Definitely. And one more thing is the, the danger is that the political environment in Kerala is actually very conducive to the growth of these uh, you know extremist elements like PFI. Uh, earlier they were semi, then uh, it became NDF, then PFI. Tomorrow it might re-emerge. They will regroup and re-emerge is what uh, I'm getting to know. But uh, the main issue is the, uh, like you said, the, the administrative support that they are getting or they might have sources within the administration from where the you know information is being leaked. And we have seen that even in the past, like during elections and all, they have made some, uh, you know, uh, unholy alliances with the ruling left or Congress. So this ha has been there. So they are getting some kind of a support 
from the parties inside kerala and which is why they are active and they are they have their base mostly in the in the south especially kerala mm. and tamil nadu some parts of tamil nadu mm. now the objective of simi uh, if you see what the objective of simi was to you know uh, lead life uh, according to quran propagate islam mm. wage jihad and that's exactly what what pfi was doing mm. so whether it is pfi or you know simi or uh, tomorrow it might reemerge in some other name the ideology remains the same and how are we going to ban this ideology or how do we you know stop them from uh, propagating this ideology is what worries me the most mm. and if you see the list of anti national activities pfi has carried out in the past it's a huge list right from murders of cpm workers to mm. muslim league workers to congress workers and the recent murders of rss and bjp leaders mm. they have done a, a lot of illegal activities in the state and still the ban came only recently this uh, and even the money trail even the money trail if you see the uh, uh, the, the money trail with isis this was leaked in an, uh, in 2017 i think mm. there was a pfi activity activist who had links with isis and he was uh, you know doing the money transfer and all this but till mm. uh, this time we were not able to ban this organization and what worries the most is their their political arm stpi is still active mm. so how is uh, this organization or how are we going to stop the ideology remains a bigger question Although PFI and all its affiliates stand banned, you are saying SDPI is still active. They've be, they've also become very smart that they've stopped participating in television debates. They've start stop sending their spokesperson so that they don't get exposed. Now, using the system to subvert the system, using the laws of the country to subvert the laws of the country, and twist and turn facts. Uh, how would you end up banning an outfit and organization like this if they have more than 23 to 30000 cadre who are uh, uh, affiliated to them across the country arresting 200 is that enough savior rodriguez are these raids which the no, nia actually. conducts while taking into confidence local police is that itself a misstep pfi is basically a wolf in sheep clothing hmm. so yesterday they were semi today they are pfi tomorrow they'll be something else hmm. so what you're dealing with the ban is primarily dealing with the symptoms of the disease not the cause of the disease mm. right yeah. so the disease is islamic radicalization which their intent is to spread across india and other parts of the world which is why pfi has got its tie ups with isis and al qaeda which is why the money trail leads to certain areas that are known to be terror sympathizers mm. the point is the ban is necessary because while you're dealing with the disease you also have to work on the symptoms of the disease right. which is what we are seeing right now so why is pfi dangerous pfi is dangerous not because of itself being an organization pfi is dangerous because it's a mindset that brings these people together and this islamic radicalization that they they profess and they propagate is what is dangerous and it's dangerous why because it's the front end that supposedly shows that they are into doing service into doing charity but it's the back end that's into the activities of spreading hate spreading fear against other religions and that is why you have seen over a period of time pfi which was normally restricted to just kerala which is where the raids are going on right now yeah. has actually managed to spread itself even to the north so pfi as a as a system is a very well organized system of islamic radicalization so taking off the heads is a great idea but you have to go to the root cause of what brings pfi alive and why do they do it continuously mm. why does it keep coming up uh, again and again and mm. that is islamic radicalization and in order to address islamic radicalization we as a nation must have the courage to call out islamic radicalization for what it is it is hate it is not about the muslims in india hmm. it is about islamic radicalization which is a disease happening all around the world and, and you have the, muslims in india you have indians and, and, and the interesting indian part muslims. is what they talk about is a very very arabized uh, uh, you know system they do not talk That's about true. an indian cultural rooted system they do not talk about what is indian system what they talk about is a very alien system but here is a here is a problem neera jatri how do i arrest somebody who intelligence believes is radicalized how do i go ahead okay, uh, if if a group of people are meeting and if somebody is uh, engaging in something 
how do i go and arrest that person because the courts will turn around and say just because you feel this person is radicalized doesn't mean this person is causing harm to society see this is how they spread their tentacles and they operated for more than a decade and a half and the six they were not present only in kerala their roots are in kerala largely in north kerala and from there they have spread but there were six different entities that came together in 2006 to form pfi so they were already present in six states including rajasthan and they had this organization which was operating in kota which then became part of pfi correct yeah uh, that that is actually the problem with the situation we are handling or mm. you know, i should say the agencies are handling because mm. as you rightly pointed out that how can we say that this guy is radical and this is not how are we going to prove it mm. and uh, as you were talking i was reminded of the words of abul musab yusuf i don't mm. know how many people know about him hmm. he is generally known by the name son of hamas yeah he he used to work for hamas then later on he learned that he, what he is doing is wrong and then he switched sides hmm. he he said a very particular sentence he said that <laughs> how will you deal with this ideology because the organization might change its name correct yesterday it was al qaeda today it is isis tomorrow it will be something else the root cause lies in quran because the biggest terrorist is the god which is present in the quran hmm. now unfortunately what we have done is under the name of secularism we have given it a, a halo of sanctity that since it is a holy book therefore we are not going to ban it we are not going to dis- even discuss it hmm. and second second thing that comes to mind is there is this lady called wafa sultan who shifted from syria to america she she was talking in the context of america but the same thing applies in india also she said she said that the west has invented terms like radical islam political islam wahhabi islam actually it is islam that is the problem mm-hmm. muhammadanism that is the problem all these guys all these pfi people or simi people what they are trying to do they are trying to do their li- lives according to what is prescribed in quran what is prescribed in hadith what is prescribed in the uh, mm-hmm. biography of muhammad the prophet of islam so how do you contain it unless and until you hold it from the scruff of the neck and say that look this is the problem this book or this ideology is a problem and we have to protect our nation our civilization from this hmm. the, now this, this is where this is where neeraj atri what you are saying is I, i would not want to broad brush and paint everybody every muslim who's following the tenets of islam with the same brush that they are all radical now there could be those oh. who could also selectively interpret certain passages and say no this is the only way because islam also as a religion evolved over 200 years there are nations which have part followed a very very moderate and a liberal path there are bulk of indians across the country uh, who are muslims who do not subscribe to the pfi and who do not engage engage with this so to broad brush it and say that the whole problem is with the religion with the book uh, i do not agree with you there neeraj atri you may say that there are portions of this book which are misinterpreted there are parts of this book which push for a particular radical bent and this this lot is using that selectively see see what we do is we try to pick and choose it is not like hinduism where you can pick and choose hmm. it is a total package what they say is the entire book is a word of allah hmm. uh, an imaginary god which is sitting on the seventh heaven and since it is his word it cannot be changed so mm. each and every word is sacrosanct it is written in stone it cannot be compromised mm. come what may mm. it is a total package we cannot pick and choose mm. and that very book contains more than 200 okay i'll just give you an idea mm. overall quran contains 6236 verses yes out of 3910 more than that that means nearly 2/3 talk about kufar or kafirs that means not about moments but about non muslims hmm. and in these two third of the verses there are no verses which talk in a reconciliatory tone they are talking about converting them killing them and uh, forcing their women into concubinage hmm. moreover when we are talking about jihad uh, like mithun said that we are talking about jihad there is a much more important word in quran which is known as qital it hmm. comes from the root now hmm. look at these two words jihad comes 35 times in that entire, entire quran whereas qital comes 200 uh, sorry 125 times in quran and what they are doing is since the scenario has changed so now what they do is they try to translate qital also as jihad hmm. now qital fighting 
to kill non muslims there is compromise it is not some inner struggle which we are talking about and when we say that not all muslims are like that absolutely agree because mm. not all muslims are leading their lives according to the quranic text mm. they are not leaving no they are and, not and see the, the, yeah. the, see but my my point is that there are people who have also realized that religion and theology has to evolve and this has happened with all faiths they have evolved but there are also those who say we want to go back to the medieval ages we want to go back to the uh, dark times and and we want to go back to what was uh, arbi islam see I- islam evolved based on and it also amalgamated with cultures across as it spread across the world look 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 the approach what the indonesia has taken look at the approach today what saudi arabia is is gradually taking under mohammed bin salman there are nations who are saying though we want to evolve we also want to become moderate because extremism is not the way if these entities the problem Yes, Savio. Yes, Savio. The problem, to both most of my understanding, because I do a lot yeah. of study as far as religion is concerned, mm. it's not religion that's really the problem. Mm. You no, know, though we might look at religion being the root cause of conflict. Mm. The real thing is a person's interpretation of his or her religion. Mm. You know, and their their dependency on the fact that religion amongst the mass audience is yeah. power. Mm. So power to control. Yeah. So today, when you have whether extremists, whether it's in Islam, whether it's Christianity, whether it's in Hinduism and right. Buddhism, the extremist aspect mm. of of religion is taking a certain verses, a certain aspects of the religion, using it to control a mass audience, mm. and that mass audience getting converted to that thought process, yeah. and that's what Islamic radicalization was all about: was to show the Muslims. Hmm. in being being raped being uh, yeah. brutalized being targeted and therefore over a period of time you know you have so much of hate embedded into the muslims in india and outside of india that majority of them feel that the only way to get back is to retaliate against the foreign forces which hmm. in this case are religion hmm. so religion becomes a weapon yeah it it becomes a tool and like you said this whole narrative of you are under attack so you need to counter and you need to hit back to defend so this uh, religion is under attack religion is under danger so the only option is to pick up the sword and go ahead and hit back and this so this kind of narrative stitching is happening and we can see that in these videos which are coming via the al qaeda via the isis and their mouthpieces etc which are actively being pushed and perpetrated some of the aspects which have come out in the nia affidavit before i go back to nirmal ji and also mithun vijay kumar now these are the revelations in the nia affidavit as it exposed the pfi's modus operandi the first revelation is that pfi identified individuals for possible targeting so those who are vulnerable those who can be brainwashed a lot of them are edu- educated individuals ladies and gentlemen graduates post graduates a lot of them are scientists engineers etc pfi had a secret wing of reporters to prepare a hit list then some pfi cadre also propagated the ideology of isis in syria Another revelation is that PFI cadre committed multiple murders in Kerala and the revelation fifth revelation is that they killed victims brutally to try and send a message to society that don't mess with us acts committed with intent to terrorize people revelation 7 the PFI encouraged youth to join lashkar al qaeda and isis the eighth revelation is suspicious financial transactions for unlawful activity so these are the eight odd revelations that came in from the nia affidavit then they also said this is what they said you creating groups a secret reporters wing secret wing with the intent to prepare a list of targets and they collected the data of leaders of other communities they imparted training on subversive activities to cadre and then the modus operandi was imparting training needing probe that's what the nia is saying encourage youth to join lashkar isis and of course head towards syria and also join the al qaeda some of the cadre also propagated the ideology uh, and then travel to syria for joining isis and that number is quite significant although it's 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 been brushed out and tried to be uh, the effort was to play it down a larger conspiracy to make cadre join isis also needs probe is what the nia is saying interestingly nirmal kaur ji each each one of these revelations point to one aspect to radicalize their intent was to radicalize 
the intent was not to say that you know you become a benign server they used fronts like name is india popular front of india campus front of india sdpi is a students democratic uh, 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 social democratic party of india something like okay. that so everything is india 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 but what's being pushed is islam and that too radical bent why would you want to get sent youngsters from india all over to syria brainwash women the kerala christian forum complained against the pfi complained against the pfi and its activities saying that they are trying to radicalize christian girls the isis widow story is very interesting that out of the 8 or 10 widows who are languishing in jails in kabul about 4 or 5 of them were converted <clears throat> nirmal ji totally so i think they are radicalizing not only are they intent on radicalizing they are also going about it in a highly methodical manner in a highly organized methodical manner and you know like first they prepare lists then they see who all are vulnerable who can be radicalized what can be done to who's radicalized to what degree who's ready to be sent to syria who's not who can just be a you know some kind of a mule locally in ordinary run of the mill kind of things mm. so they are radicalizing they are grading people as per their radicalization and using them so uh, pfi i think is a mentality not an organization as i think someone uh, said mm. something similar on the panel it's a, it's a mentality they are transmitting like a virus to everyone mm. that this is what you know we want we want a political islam and we are being persecuted they convince them somehow Mm. that if you don't believe in all this you will be persecuted or you know somehow you will you will face your end or you will face extinction they yeah. manage to convince people mm. that they are they are they have to defend their faith and they have to defend themselves and uh, that is the way you know and what really is surprising is they are much more organized than simi much more methodical than simi and they have learned their lessons well from simi and they don't want to repeat the you know they 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 are Uh, this they have a very uh, carefully crafted face so mm. it is going to be very very difficult to uh, because that gives them a lot of deniability no we are india we are we are yeah they they also hide country. behind this veil of plausible deniability all their leaders all yes. their functionaries do the other thing is that like ai learns by itself you know th- this organization yes. has mutated to be to learn and become better and better to try and make so many filters and put so many layers that is going to be difficult to get right to the bottom and weed them out so what's the next step mithun vijay kumar how does the system weed them out how does the system ensure that they don't take root shape in another form and they don't manifest because although their base is largely in kerala they have been present across the country in a lot of disturbances they've also evolved in terms of how they will create social unrest how they will cause uh, activities or what kind of activities they will get involved in to subvert the system yes uh, see the only solution is like you said they are more like ai they are learning and they are improving day by day and the only solution would be that the state government and uh, center uh, work hand in hand and you know deal with this issue and people also must realize that you know these uh, organizations uh, they should keep aside their religious beliefs and understand that uh, the threat that radical organizations like pfi pose to this country see there are plenty of uh, islamic organizations in kerala that work for the welfare of people but mm. pfi is definitely a threat to the national security they have links to terrorist organizations outside india from where they actually receive funds to carry out terrorist activities inside mm. uh, the in, inside india especially focusing you know kerala and the southern region so there are there, there are you know plenty of uh, activities that they have done like the arms mm. training cases there uh, weapons were seized from stp and pfi officers the bengaluru rights were sponsored by them they are actually anti national they had you know they had they had stopped the independence day program for singing singing one day matra mm. they have raised uh, you know pakistan they celebrate the mopla massacre so, they they openly celebrate the mopla mopla massacre on the streets of kerala and yes, they are allowed yes, to do yes, that yes and uh, the irony is that even the you know uh, the the people who are part of the mopla rebel in the mopla massacre they were later uh, awarded uh, i mean they were actually recognized as freedom fighters by the left government that that's a different thing altogether so the kind of appeasement politics that is in kerala is what uh, um, making it conducive for you know uh, organizations like pfi to grow and right. strengthen its uh, roots so i actually request the state government to you know work hand in hand with the sen- center to ensure mm-hmm. that this organization doesn't reemerge or mm-hmm. or at least you know we should work together to put an end to this islamic radicalization in the country well, i i have to wind up but uh, this is a rankling worry that somebody from the local establishment informed these leaders and allowed them to get away hours before the raids happened break of dawn the raids happen and these leaders three four of them 
escaped from Patanam Titta? Are there many more? So who are these moles within the system who are willing to work with these people who are up to no good for India? That's a concern which also the Pindrai Vijayan-led government must have because it's not healthy. I thank you all for joining us. We wind up Viewpoint on that note. Biggest exclusive follows. Stay with us.